What up, what up? Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to bring you guys chapter one in my Unreal Engine 5 for Beginners course. We're going to go through all the steps to get you guys acclimated with installation, setting up your account, and getting you familiar with the UI. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So welcome to chapter one. In this chapter, it's going to be geared more towards the person that's never ever opened up Unreal Engine before. So to get started, make sure you go to unrealengine.com. And once you do, this is the landing page that you're currently going to see. And so you'll see a montage of different things running inside of Unreal Engine 5. And the first thing that I want to show you guys is the EULA because I get a lot of questions from people asking me like, hey, I know Unreal Engine is free, but is it really free? And so I kind of want to walk you through what exactly is going on here whenever you get Unreal Engine and who can use it free and who can't. So I'm going to come over here to where we have products and I'm going to come down here to licensing options like so. And so as we scroll down here, we're going to have a little chart here that we have the standards license, which is what we're going to be using. And then we also have the enterprise program. And you can see that we actually have a price of 1500 US dollars per seat per year. And so what this includes basically is if you need any type of customer support, if you need any type of private training, this is going to be how much it's going to cost for your company to be able to get that. So using Unreal Engine is absolutely free for anybody that's in non-gaming. And if you are in non-gaming, this is what you're going to want to use if you want that personal private training. Now the custom license, this comes for game development and you would have to reach out to Epic specifically to kind of negotiate your price for that. And the interesting thing about the gaming side of Unreal Engine, you can still use it for free, but the only time you'd have to pay is if your game actually made over a million dollars and then you would have to pay a percentage to Unreal Engine. But if it makes like 900 grand, then you're free and clear. And then on the non broadcast side, we can use absolutely everything for free. We don't have to pay. Now, I know a lot of people ask, like, how is this possible? And you kind of have to think about it in like the Fortnite model. So Epic Games, they also make the game Fortnite, which is another game that is available absolutely free. And the way that they're able to monetize it is with their marketplace. And so you see people buying like the different skins and the different dance emotes and things of that nature. That's basically where they're making their money. So using that same type of formula, Unreal Engine does the same thing. So we can have Unreal Engine absolutely free, but they also have a marketplace where you can buy things like different texture packs 3d models different sound packs etc and so think about it in that way and you should be good to go now let's get down to downloading it so i'm going to scroll further down to the bottom here where it says download so i'm going to hit download now and that's going to bring us to the next page here and which is another question i get a lot is the different system requirements for your system now i know unreal engine 5 could be pretty lenient like i've used it on my system here i have a high-end system here a thread ripper i have a 2080 ti everything works fine but i also have a mid-level gaming laptop that i've actually used it on as well but i would say go through here go through the spec sheets you can actually get the full system requirements right here if you click so scrolling further down we're going to come down here and we're going to come down here to download launcher now you're going to click on this it's going to download an executable file if you're on pc or it's going to download a mac file if you're using a mac and what you want to do from here actually while this is downloading you can actually make your account now there's several different ways that you can sign into epic games in which i'm going to show you right here and so as i was alluding to before there's several different ways to sign into unreal engine what i like to do i like to keep all my accounts separate but you can use your different social media accounts and your gaming accounts that kind of have it as your sign in for unreal engine so if you look right here on the browser if i scroll down you can make an epic games account you can sign in with your facebook with your google account xbox playstation nintendo steam and apple Again, me personally, I made an Epic Games account just because I want to kind of keep everything separate, but you do have different options here. So say like if you wanted to sign in with your Xbox account, you would just click on that. You would make your Epic Games account with your Xbox account and you should be able to sign in with that. But for me, again, I would like to just say that I like to keep everything separate. Maybe make an Epic Games account so you can keep everything spread out. So once you have everything set up with your Epic Games account and you have the Epic Games launcher downloaded and you have everything installed, this is going to be the menu that you're going to be presented with. So I'm just going to go through here and get you guys acclimated with everything that you see on the screen here. And so you'll be greeted with this scene. Basically at the top, this is going to show you the most important things right here. So as of right now, it's showing a headline for Twin Motion 2022.2. But if you scroll down, 
you can see that we have featured screenshots with this will change out periodically and then this changes out weekly we have weekly spotlights so if you upload your stuff to the forum or art station or if they see your stuff on twitter you have a good chance of being featured down here and then on the left hand side we also have feature content in which this will usually show you what they're going to be streaming on twitch this right here is usually what they're going to show you what's free in the marketplace which we'll go through here in a minute and if we scroll down it's more like a blog area down here at the bottom and then if you come down here in the lower left hand corner where we have settings this is where you can kind of enable some different things so like i usually turn this off where it says run my computer at start you want to usually turn it off so you can kind of manually start that whenever you want to this one right here where it says hide the game library and so the epic game launcher it has several things included in it which it has a marketplace for actual video games and then also the marketplace for unreal engine and also where you install unreal engine and so that option right there is more for people that really don't care about the gaming side they just want to see the unreal engine content you would actually click this off and this will actually get rid of these two sections right here so under epic games where it says store and library the store is actually the storefront so let me click on this and show you guys what exactly this is but for anybody that's done any type of pc gaming like on steam or origin or anything like that it's exactly the same thing it's just a storefront to buy and download video games and so if you look right here you can see on the right hand side we have like a bunch of different games that are being featured and another cool thing that you have with your epic games account is if you scroll down here to the middle they also give out free games periodically it will have a date down here right right now it's saying free from now to september 22nd and so i would periodically check in here just to see what free games they have if you are a gamer and then the other part right here is a library these are all the different games that you got so everything here inside my library is stuff that i've actually just gotten for free within that section there but as you install the different games they'll be highlighted right here and then if i scroll down you can see I have the rest of the games that I have as well in there. And so again, that's only for people that are interested in gaming. But if I actually come back over to Unreal Engine and I come down here to settings and hit hide game library, it's going to say disable game library, click OK. And then I'm going to go back. And now you can see that we only have Unreal here and we don't have any of the gaming stuff there. And so moving on, I'm going to go from the top to the left to the right and just go through some of these tabs to get you guys acclimated with what's up here. So if I click on samples, this used to be the learn tab for anybody that's used Unreal Engine 4. They changed this out whenever Unreal Engine 5 came out. But if you come to samples, you can actually download different scenes. Like right here, we have the city sample. If anybody's seen like the Matrix Awaken demo that came out on a PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, you can actually download that scene to play around with it in Unreal Engine 5 and just kind of see how they built out their environment. We have a couple more samples down here from MetaHumans. We have a broadcast package in which my friends at Capacity put together, which is really cool. And we also have some hair dynamic samples and things of that nature. And so whenever Epic Games usually comes out with a new feature, they'll come out with a sample pack that you can download and you can kind of backward engineer just to get a sense of how they built everything out. And then if we scroll further down, we can actually see we have a lot of the legacy stuff in here as well. So we'll say UE legacy samples, and this is stuff that we've had in previous versions of Unreal Engine. I would say just go down here, maybe download a couple of scenes if you never used Unreal before, and kind of just backward engineer on how they built some of this stuff out. And then also, if you go over to the forum, sometimes they'll have like a video tutorial that will correlate with this as well that you can follow along with. So scrolling back up to the top, the next one that we have here is the marketplace, in which I'm going to click on this now in which the marketplace is going to be a place that you're going to spend a lot of time because they have a lot of valuable assets in here especially because just like on the gaming side they actually give away free assets from the marketplace every month as well and so if i come over here and you just kind of scroll down here to the middle you can see free for the month and these are going to be all the stuff that you get free for that month and so as long as you claim these within that month they're yours to use absolutely free for the rest of the duration that you have your epic games account now the important thing is it is tied to your account so for whatever reason if you lose your account and you can't get back into it you'll no longer have access to these unless you downloaded them and saved them somewhere so just you know be clear about that this is going to be tied to your epic games account that you use to log in with and then up here where we have free we have some more categories here as well we have the permanently free stuff 
we have marketplace collections we have mega scans and so i would just say go through here through the marketplace kind of see what you want they pretty much have everything in there like i said they have textures they have whole scenes built out they have sound design everything that you could think of is more than likely in the marketplace and so i could see you spending a lot of time here because i certainly do now moving back over this is going to be the next thing that i'm going to show this is the actual library i'm not going to mess with twin motion because i've never quite really used this before but the library that's another important tab that we're going to spend some time in because this is where we actually download unreal engine at and so as you can see right now i have two versions of unreal engine installed i have a version 4 installed which is 4.2 7.2 which was the latest and last version of unreal engine 4 and then as of right now i have the latest version of unreal engine 5 installed but if you ever wanted to go back and download any of the legacy unreal engines all you'd have to do is click on engine version click on the plus sign and that's going to bring up another tab here and you would just click on the down arrow and you can actually go all the way back to version 4.0 or if you've never installed unreal engine before this is exactly how you would go about installing unreal engine so i already have unreal engine installed but if i didn't have an install this is exactly what you would have to do just come over here to the plus symbol and this is how you get it installed now if i scroll down here you can see that these are several projects that i've worked on before here but if you keep going down here to the bottom inside of your vault, this is everything that you've gotten from the marketplace. And so most of the stuff here is stuff that I've actually gotten free throughout the past couple of years, which they have a lot of really cool assets that I was able to accumulate. Some of them are purchased as well. But again, this is all stuff that's tied to my account. And so I have this whole entire library of different stuff in my vault that I have access to at any point. And so let's say like if i wanted to add like this spec ops to my project all you would have to do is click on add the project and then you would select the project that you want to actually put it into and then you would click on it so let's say i want to put it into like the sports illustrator project i would click add the project and then now we'll add it in there and you'll find it in your content browser and which we'll go through here in a moment but first let me get started by opening up a project and then we're going to go through some of the navigational stuff here in unreal engine 5. So right here, you can see that I have Unreal Engine 5 started up and it's open. For this example, I'm gonna be using the scene that I've actually got off the marketplace. It's absolutely free. And if you wanna follow along, let me show you exactly where you can get this on the marketplace so that you know how to download some free assets. So right now, I'm back inside the Epic Games launcher. I'm on the marketplace right here. So what I'm gonna do right here, instead of my search products, I'm gonna hit factory. I'm gonna hit enter. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to actually come down here to the lower right hand side where it says max price. I'm going to click on free. And this is the one that I'm actually using right here. So if I click on it, you can see that it's already free. And as you can see right here, this one actually says create project. It doesn't say add to project because this is going to create a full fledged project for you to run around in and work in and kind of backwards engineer. If you wanted to create something from scratch, what you would do is actually up here where you see the launch button, you would just hit launch Unreal Engine 5, and I will create a blank scene for you. But again, I wanted to have a scene just to kind of show you some stuff that's inside of a scene while I'm showing you guys the navigation stuff inside of Unreal Engine 5. And so getting back into it, we have Unreal Engine 5 here. And so I'm gonna get started off by showing you guys how we can actually navigate inside this scene. Now we could do this a couple of ways. Like we're gonna make sure that we have our mouse button and I like to hold down the right click. Some people like to hold down the left click, but you can hold down any mouse button pretty much to navigate on a scene. So I'm gonna hold down the right mouse button and then on the keyboard, I'm actually gonna hit the A button to move left. I'm gonna hit the D button to move right. I'm gonna hit S to move backwards. And I'm gonna hit W to move forward. And so anybody that's played any type of video game, this is exactly how you would navigate a video game. And so again, that is A to move left. That is D to move right. W to move forward and S to move backwards. And you can actually hold down several of these together. So like right now, I'm gonna hold down W and D. And that's gonna bring me over to like forward right, forward left if I hold down W and A. If I hold down a Z key, that kind of gives us like this elongated on our camera. I'm gonna hold down the C key to bring everything back. So again, I'm holding down the right click on my mouse button and I'm hitting these keys to move around and everything. And so now 
the thing is we can actually propel up and we could go down as well so again on my mouse i'm gonna hold down the right key or we can hold down the left and i'm gonna actually hit q and that's gonna bring us down and if i hit e that's gonna bring us straight up and then if i want to look around i'm holding down the right button on my mouse still and i'm just panning around with my mouse and so that's exactly how a video game would work so like it's made as a game engine and so you know the navigational style only makes sense because this is how you will operate inside of a game engine and so if you're a non-gamer this might take a little bit for you to get used to but it's um it's actually pretty good like i wish other you know dccs would actually use this because it's pretty natural whenever we're moving around instead of our viewport here so if we want to move around in increments if you have a mouse that actually has like a scroll wheel on it if we move it forward you can actually see we're just incrementally moving forward and then if i scroll backwards on the mouse wheel we're incrementally moving backwards as well so this is good so let's say like if i come here and then if i'm holding down the w key on the s key and i'm not quite getting where i want to be we could just kind of pick our position here and then just scroll on the mouse wheel to kind of just give us little increments to move in and out. Now that we know how to navigate around the scene and everything, let me show you guys how we can actually manipulate the viewport. So if you do have like a lower end system, you don't want to be struggling as you're moving around. There is a way that we can actually lower the settings that your viewport is going to be a little bit less intensive for those systems. We have inside of our viewport, it's called scalability. I have it on cinematic and so this is going to be the best quality that our viewport is in but if you don't see this right here all you'd have to do is come over to settings and then you would come down here to where we see engine scalability settings and this is where you're going to kind of pick out how you want your different stuff to show inside your viewport so if you see if i click on low you can see what happened in the viewport made it into a resolution that a lower end system should be able to handle if I click on high, you can see, you know, the lighting came in a little bit different. We're getting more dynamic lighting and everything. I like working in cinematic because that's going to give us the most realistic range of what we're working inside of our viewport here. Or if you don't want to guess, you can always come over here and click automatic as well. And it's going to kind of test the settings for your particular system and give you what unreal engine thinks that your system can handle so if i hit auto here it's usually going to go down to epic which is good in itself and this is going to make sure that we're getting a good frame rate whenever we're working inside of here so if you're ever interested in seeing what kind of frame rate you're actually getting inside of your viewport if you come over to the top left where we have like this hamburger button here i'm going to left click i'm going to hit show fps and then over here on the right hand side you can see that i'm getting close to like 30 frames per second here as i navigate inside of my viewport and if i come over here i'm going to come down to engine scalability let's click on low and now let's see what kind of frame rate i'm getting so i'm getting closer to 45 so you can see that how that's kind of giving us a better range inside of our viewport here as we're working around so i'm actually going to get rid of the sps come back to scalability Let's just come over here to Epic and let me show you what some of these settings are for real time. So if I come up here, let's see if we can find some like real time effects in which I have like this spark happening right here on the light. You see we have spark and then we have some smoke as well in which this could kind of be intensive on your system as well. So if you don't want this running in real time all the time, all you'd have to do is click on the hamburger button again. And right here under viewport options where it says real time or the shortcut key for it will be control r if i click on that now we no longer have those different effects running inside of our scene which will help you get a better frame rate as well and so i'm going to actually come back over here click on real time again and i'm just going to let this play through so now that we're pretty familiar with how to navigate through our system let's look through the ui a little bit just so we kind of know where everything's at and so i'm first going to get started off with the outliner because everything that's inside the outliner is going to correlate with what's inside the viewport here so if i look over here on the right hand side and let me actually scroll this out so we can see it better everything that we see here that's inside the outliner this is going to correlate with everything inside of our viewport so if i actually click on something in my viewport you can see it automatically jump to it inside the outliner and if i double click in my outliner on the object it actually zooms you into where that particular object is so let's say we want to go to like air conditioning unit number two here if i double click on it 
is going to take us to the scene where we have that air conditioning unit, which is right there in front of us. And we can kind of just scroll in and see it right there, which is pretty cool because as you can see, the scene is massive. So if you know a specific area that you want to go to, that is really helpful inside the outliner to just double click on stuff and be able to zoom around the scene. And so if let's say right now, everything is kind of unorganized, like this is all sitting there inside the world outliner, we can actually add folders as well. So if I come up here to the very top of the hierarchy, if I right click, we can actually create a folder and let's just name this one actor. And then I can left click, hold down shift, select this, bring it into my actor. And there we go. So this is a way that we could kind of organize our outliner as well. As I start building out scenes from scratch in these other chapters for you guys, you can see how I organize my scene, but I rarely utilize the different folders because I hate having just everything kind of discombobulated inside the outliner. So I would definitely say get in the habit of organizing your files. So moving on, this is going to be it right now for the outliner. We'll get more acclimated as we start building that stuff out in the chapters. But if I come down here to the details panel, this is where we're going to have like our transform tools and everything. So let me actually come over here and let me find something that we can actually start transforming the tools on. Actually, let me just bring in. Let me come down here and we'll just do it from here. So let's find this item right here, which is the curtain. As you can see, we have our axis right here. And if I look over here at my details, you can see that this is going to be correlating with the axes up here. So if I move my location like so, now you can see that we're moving it in there like that. And then same thing with rotation. If you want to rotate it, you can actually just type in the attribute numbers in here as well. And if you click on this, this will just reset it to zero. So where we have this reset property, reset it to zero, I'm going to hit control Z to bring everything back. And then same thing for scale. Right now, everything is kind of offset because it's not locked. So if I actually scroll this, you can see that we're getting elongated along that axis there. But if I hit control Z, if I come over here to scale and I hit the lock, now if I scale it, everything is going to be working in unison. And so that's one thing in there as well. If you come in, you could type in like a direct number if you want. And yeah, that is that. And if I hit the reset value, everything goes to one. So the details panel is vital if you want to go in and kind of numerically get everything down to a fine detail down to the decimal. That's exactly where you want to go. But we can also access the transform tools within our viewport as well. So if I look right here and set my viewport, you can see right here we have some transform tools and these are pretty much directly accoladed with everything we have in our details panel. So starting from my left to my right, this is going to be select object. So this is strictly for just selecting objects inside of our scene here. If I click on this one right here, this is going to be our move tool in which we can move everything left, right, up, down as so. And as you can see, as we're moving it in here, it's actually changing numerical value inside of our details panel as well. And then right here in the middle, we have the rotate tool in which we can rotate on the different axes as well. And then right here on the far right, we have the scale object in which you can scale it strictly by the different axes so I could stretch it that way. Or if you come down here where it selects all three of them, everything is just yellow. If I click, I'm holding down the left click on my mouse button and I'm just dragging it around and this is scaling it proportionally. Now, as you can see, whenever I'm using anything inside the transform tools there, everything is moving in increments. And so if I look further to the right from my transform tools, this is where we can actually set up the increments for our viewport here for those different transform tools. So I'm going to get back to these two right here in a little bit. But right here is where we can set up the different increments. And so if I actually click this off and let me come over here to my transform, whenever I'm moving it, I'm freely moving it around. But if I click this on, it's going to be moving in increments of 10 and you can actually change that right here as well. So if I want to say maybe increments of 100 and I select, you can see that it's doing big jumps there. Or if I want to freely just move it around, you turn that off and you can just move it around like so. And as you can see down here, it's actually going down to the decibels as well. So it's not just like increments of five or 100 It's basically just moving it freely around your viewport. And so the same thing with our rotation here, as you can see, it's snapping in increments of 10. If I come over here, turn this off. Now I'm just freely moving this around in which on a dial, you can actually see the numerical value of how it's moving around in this rotation. 
I'm gonna hit control Z to reset that. I'm gonna turn this back on. And let's say you want to like do it by 45 degree angles. So I'm gonna left click again. I'm gonna hold this down and move it. And now you can see that's moving in increments of 45 degree angles. And same thing for scale. If I come over here and scale it, you can see it's moving it in increments of 0.25. If I turn this off, I'm just gonna freely move this around. I'm left clicking to hold down the scale key. And then I'm gonna turn this back on. Let's say I wanna do it in increments of like 10, just to exaggerate it. I'm gonna hold this down and boom, like it's extremely large. You can actually go in here and actually just switch it out in different numerical values of maybe smaller increments like so. So I'm gonna come back here. There we go, something like that. But you can kind of see how these correlate with everything in the transform tools as well. Now, getting back to this section right here, this is going to actually switch everything between the coordinate scale and the world scale. And so to show you an example of this, let me actually come over here, click on the move tool right here. You can see the axis is actually aligned with our particular object here. But if I click on this, you can see that we have a world icon here and now the axis switch. So everything is aligned with how it would be in the actual world. So if I come over here and click rotate, let's move this down like so. I'm gonna click back on it and you can see that my axis didn't move at all, but my object did. And this is good if you wanna place stuff in a particular area and you wanna do it by the row axis there. Or if you wanna go by your object axis, click that again and now everything moved like so. Now this last part of the toolbar up top, this is gonna to be important because depending on how big your scene is, whenever you're navigating inside your scene, that camera speed might be too fast. And so there is a way that we could slow it down, especially if you're working like in a smaller scene and we don't need our camera to navigate through big areas. And so if I'm back here on my viewport in my top right hand corner, you can see that we have this camera icon and this is for camera speed. So if I come down here and I hold down the right click and I hold W, you can see the speed that we're kind of navigating at right now. And if I want to slow that down, let me come back here to camera speed and I'm gonna move it down to one. And then now I'm holding the S key while holding down the right key. And you can see how slow we're moving inside of our scene. So you can see how this will be extremely important because if you're working inside of a small area, you might not want your camera to move that fast. And again, if I come over here, let's crank this all the way up to eight. You can see how fast we're moving into our scene now. Now, by default, it's gonna be on four. And let's say that we need to like scale it for whatever reason. Let's say I bring it back to four and we move it up. You can see that we can actually move this up a lot more. And so it just depends on how big and how vast of an area. I usually keep it on one because I do cinematic renders, but if you're working on like a game and you have like a really vast landscape, I can see where that scalar kind of comes in because you might need to travel far distances at the blink of an eye. And so as I alluded to at the beginning of this chapter, I wanted this one to be a little bit more just getting people familiar with everything, but I'm not gonna go through every single little aspect of the GUI here because I feel like in the later chapters and we're starting to build stuff out together, you're gonna get better acclimated where, where everything is. And so the next important thing that I actually wanna go through would be the sequencer because that's something that we're gonna be spending a lot of time in. And so in order to get to that, we actually have one built out here first, and then I'm going to show you guys how you can import one on your own. So if I come down here to my content browser, you can see this is where we actually have all of our folders. And so you can see them in one of two places right here. Everything is laid out. And then on the left hand side, you would actually have it to where like you would unfold everything and you can see everything in there. And since this is a scene that's already fully built out from the marketplace, we have a whole bunch of stuff in here. But usually if you're starting with a blank scene, you'll have nothing inside your content browser at all. And so coming down here, we actually have this folder called sequences in which we have a couple of sequences here as well. And so if you're not familiar with what sequences are, it's basically a timeline. So if you're working from like Cinema 4D or Maya or After Effects, our timeline is where we lay our keyframes. This is how we make the duration for how long a cinematic is gonna be. And Unreal Engine has all that built in plus more because Unreal Engine can actually work as like an NLE, which is a non-linear editor. So people that are familiar with like Premiere or Blackmagic Resolve, it has like everything like that all built into one program. So what I'm gonna do is double click on this right here. And this is gonna bring up the sequencer, AKA our timeline. And so let me go all the way to the beginning here. 
I'm going to click on this camera here and again we'll go through all this stuff as we're building our projects but and I kind of just want to hit play and show you guys the power of the sequencer as you can see we have some stuff split up into several different shots here and so this is the first shot here and then right here it's going to actually cut to another camera and so you can actually take different camera cuts and edit them together inside the sequencer which is really really cool here so I'm going to stop that and if you actually wanted to add your own sequencer in here, all you'd have to do is come up to the clipboard right here. You would left click, come down to add level sequence. You would just name it what you want and it will save it inside of our content browser. So I'll just leave it at new level sequence Hit save. And now you have a blank sequence in here in which if you have like a camera, you could just click and drag it in here and you could start laying your keyframes again. I don't want to get too much into that right now. We're going to cover that in later chapters, but I just wanted to show you guys that so you could get familiar on how we could bring the timeline into Unreal Engine. And as I close that out and I look up here into my select mode, this is something that we'll cover in other chapters as well. But we actually could build out like full landscapes. We have my favorite tool, which is the foliage tool where we could take like different objects and plants and stuff and just paint them across our terrain and our scene, which is really cool. We'll be doing a lot of stuff in here as well. And then we also have an animation window if you want to do character animation and things of that nature. Again, we'll be going through some of this stuff in the later chapters. But another important thing here is if you come over here to where this little box is with the plus sign, this is how we're going to get to our mega scans library. Now mega scans is actually built into unreal engine five. Now, no longer do we have to use the standalone and hit import in everything is well integrated. So if I click on Quixel bridge here, this is going to bring up Quixel bridge. And for those that don't know, this is the mega scans library that's all affiliated with Quixel bridge. And so if you want to get anything from the mega scans library, whether it be the different terrain assets, if you want to bring in textures, um, decals, a whole plethora of different stuff. This is exactly where you would go to to bring it in again. We're going to be going through this stuff more in detail as we start building out some of these different scenes in the other chapters, but get yourself familiar because this is all integrated inside of Unreal Engine five now, which makes it a lot easier for importing our assets. And I think to finish out this chapter, I'm just going to show you a little bit more stuff inside the content browser. Basically, this is going to be where we have all of our stuff that we're importing from outside sources. And so like we have a folder for audio effects, um, maps, which will be basically your different levels and stuff like that. But if you wanted to start adding your own assets in here and stuff, you would just right click and then you can make a new folder if you want to. You can add a new level. We can add a particle system. There's a whole bunch of different stuff that we can add in here. So if you want to bring stuff directly from Unreal Engine into the content browser, that's how you would do it. You would just right click or you can actually just drag and drop from your file explorer into here. Like if you have like FBXs or audio files or anything of that nature, texture files, you can just quickly drag and drop it into your content browser, put it into your folders and make sure you keep everything organized because it could get pretty messy pretty quickly. So make sure that you don't miss any of the chapters inside this course. If you go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jonathan Wimbush, I have a playlist there with all the different chapters as I continue to keep adding them to the course. So until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Yeah.